thanks everyone for attending. Uh, so this session is going to be about the IEEC 802.15.4 uh, layer in the Linux kernel. Uh, so I'm Mikkel. I recently got involved into the WPAM subsystem um, on a project with Corvo, trying to bring more support for the Mac management commands in the Linux kernel. So I'm going to start this presentation with a go through the specification uh, just to give a little bit of context what I'm trying to achieve and how and then I'll go through the Linux kernel stack how it's currently uh, managed um, the maybe at the end I'll try to do the demo if uh, I have enough time so here is a, a uh, short picture that shows where the specification uh, brings something in the system so you have uh, the uh, kind of an OZ model on the right uh, so the specification brings two layers, the fee layer and the data link layer, fee and Mac. Yep. Uh, so this was first introduced to create low power, low range and uh, low rate networks. Uh, typically you have uh, several devices to, to connect. Uh, you want them to be battery powered if possible. Uh, the devices will usually just wake up, send a, a bit of data, a few bytes and then go back to sleep. So that's what you use in uh, home automation, infrastructure monitoring, and there are other fields that are listed in the specification as being the target uh, for this uh, document. We usually have above uh, Zigbee, uh, well, the Zigbee applications or the Zigbee network thing is uh, using those two layers, uh, as is the six slope on layer as well, uh, was uh, using those, uh, those two layers and uh, uh, anything is built on top of them. So at the fee layer, well, the fee has uh, several uh, things to handle, like changing the channels, of course. Uh, it can perform energy detection scans. Uh, so it's basically sensing on a channel if there is someone that is talking. Uh, you don't really uh, listen at what's being uh, uh, sent on, the, on this channel. The medium access, of course, uh, so the, the main algorithm, I think, is a CSMA, CA, so um, carry sense, multiple access collision avoidance. So you try to avoid collisions with some algorithms. That's one of the different algorithms that are available in the spec, but quite common. Uh, of course, you can transmit and receive packets. When you receive packets, you have access to a, an indicator, which is the link quality indicator, the LQI. The LQI gives you the basically the strength, the signal strength, uh, with the, 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 the well, uh, that defines the, the device in front of you. And the physical data encoding, of course. Uh, there are many uh, algorithms again. Uh, you can possibly perform ranging as well. Uh, so only on ultra wideband feeds. And finally, you basically get some data from the upper layer, so namely the Mac layer. And you, can encap you have to encapsulate it uh, into a uh, fee protocol data unit, a PPDU, uh, with a header and a synchronization header. What's inside the, the payload of the fee frame is defined there. So the, the max sub layer, which is above, uh, has actually two kind of services. One of the two services is a data service, so just uh, sending the data or forwarding the data uh, by encapsulating the payload that was received into a MAC frame. So that's named the MPDU, the MAC protocol data unit. Uh, and this MAC frame contains a frame control field at the beginning. This is a field that defines the frame uh, for the peer. So basically it says what type of frame it is, if it's uh, an acknowledgement, if it's a data frame, if it's a MAC command, whatever. And it also defines the other fields that are present in this uh, in this frame because uh, almost all what you see here is optional and it depends on the, the type of frame and the how you configured it. So a good example would be the address fields. Uh, you have a source field, a destination field. Both of them can be present or not. And uh, within those uh, address fields, you can have uh, extended addressing or short addressing. So uh, you have to define in the frame control field what's to be expected. At the end, you have the frame check sequence, the FCS, which is a basically a, a two-byte checksum usually. 
So, on, on the other side, of course, you have the Mac, uh, management services, uh, which go through what we call the MLME, the Mac Sublayer Management Entity. Uh, the Mac Sublayer Management Entity offers different services like, is my mic still working? Yes, okay. Yeah, okay, perfect. I was also hearing myself back. <laughs> uh, so um, from the Mac layer, you have to choose the channel, of course, that you want to, well, you tell the file, please send, change the channel. Um, the frame validation is supposed to happen at Mac level as well. The, all the network management features such as scanning, deconning, associating, user associating is also handled at this by this entity. Uh, there are some security mechanisms as well, which I won't talk about. And uh, the acknowledgements are also part of the Mac layer. In the field, you'll find two types of devices. Uh, so the reduced function devices, uh, which are pretty limited devices, just battery powered, the sensors, usually the leaf nodes in the network. Uh, they have very few computational resources and try just to connect to another peer that has more resources and more power usually, which are the full function devices. So a full function device may either act as a leaf node as well or as a coordinator. And a coordinator is meant to have more features, well, is uh, supposed to, to uh, help managing the network uh, so it provides more synchronization services than a regular leaf node. So coordinators, um, well, any, any device uh, can connect to a coordinator, which makes, in the end, a network, which we call a personal area network, a PAN. One device has, at some point, to create a network, so this one will become the PAN coordinator. There is only one PAN coordinator in a network. It can then um, give the hand to another device which might have more computational resources or maybe a better internet connection as well. But well, that's how it starts. So the PAN coordinator will take a, will pick a PAN ID. So it's a 16 bit, a 16 bit value and a short address. So that short address is only valid on this particular PAN. It will then advertise the PAN through the beacons it might decide to send and eventually um, possibly allow the associations from other devices to create a bigger network. This works thanks to the discovery mechanism which uh, uses beacons. So beacons are very short frames. Um, they have no desti destination field. It's a frame that tells the other nodes around, uh, I am a coordinator, I'm part of this PAN, so you give the PAN ID, and if you want to reach me, I'm available at this address. So the other nodes around, either leaf nodes or other coordinators, well, yeah, um, will receive those beacons, process them, and build a list of the available nodes around. There are two kind of ways of advertising a PAN, either by sending beacons at a regular rate, so it's called a creating a, a beacon-enabled PAN, or uh, by just answering beacon requests. So if you want to join, uh, let's say you are a pretty, um, you don't have a lot of battery, you just want to wake up, perform a few uh, exchanges and then go back to sleep, uh, you might either decide to wait for a beacon if there is any, or if you want an immediate uh, beacon, you can send a beacon request on the channel you're on. And all the coordinators around, which are already part of a PAN, should in theory answer you with a beacon. So you can basically uh, perform three types of what we call a scan. Uh, so the energy detection scan is just to sense the channel and uh, that's all. The passive scan, which expect a beacon to arrive at some point, and the active scan where you actually send a beacon request. You'll get, uh, thanks to the beacon reception, a uh, link quality indicator, which gives you 
the, the strength of the signal with a, 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 a peer, a, with a coordinator, which helps you building the network like you have on the, the right side figure. Uh, you, might, uh, you might see on this figure several numbers on the edges. Those are the LQIs between all the nodes. So you know which coordinator might be the closest to you, for, in for instance. Um, so why do we, why would we want to um, create beacon-enabled spans in the first place? And I think the main answer would be that it helps saving battery. At least the leaf nodes can save more battery because uh, you expect beacons to be sent at a given rate. This rate is advertised in the in the beacon frame actually, and as a leaf node, you would expect the next beacon in a very short time frame, so you can just wake up at that moment. That's when all the devices may try to access the medium and send their data. So do they are, uh, there are time slots. Uh, you can try to access the medium during the contention aware period, which is right after the beacon. After the contention aware period, there is a contention free period. This is um, reserved for specific critical and low latency devices which might request a guaranteed time slot, a GTS. And after those slots, there is an inactive portion. So the, during the inactive portion, all the devices should just turn off their radio, perhaps uh, start sleeping. And this active and inactive, those two uh, portions are actually configurable. Uh, there is a beacon order, which is a number between zero that ranges from 0 to 15, or 14. And same for the um, super frame duration, super frame order. So those orders will increase exponentially the time of the two periods. And you can that way tune the amount of inactive time and the amount of active time between the, the beacons. Another feature is the hardware filtering. Uh, this is actually useful uh, if you don't want to be woken up, uh, if you don't want your transceiver to wake your host uh, every time a new, a new packet gets received. Uh, so you can set in hardware your extended address, your short address, your PAN ID as well, and uh, you'll also receive the, the broadcast messages. And basically what's not matching, the frames that are not matching those parameters will just get dropped by hardware. So you don't get interrupted for nothing. Uh, provided of course that you've successfully tuned your hardware filters, otherwise you might lose some frames. Uh, most transceivers are capable of at least having no filtering at all on one side and uh, full filtering with the addresses on the other side. There is in the specification uh, in, uh, two intermediate levels. One of them is called the promiscuous mode, which in the specification is defined as a mode that just checks the frame integrity. But if you look at code in the Linux kernel in particular, the Linux WPAN community, and I see Stefan laughing, uh, has decided that it will not be like that. So in the Linux kernel, when you see promiscuous mode, that actually means that there is no filtering at all because the promiscuity was meant to be used for devices that would act as sniffers. So you really want all the frames to go there, even those which are badly constructed or may have a wrong checksum. So um, in order to build those, uh, those networks, uh, you need a number of MLME operations, which are the uh, discovery of the sur surrounding devices. So this implies scanning on one end and beaconing on the other end. Enlarging and shrinking the network, which implies associating and disassociating. Keeping all the devices synchronized may be done through the beacon enabled PAN feature and the acknowledgement. And finally, handling all the faulty situations that might arise, um, which uh, I will detail a bit after as well. So those are the main Mac um, management commands that uh, you'll find in the spec. So uh, let's go through them one by one. What does all of them imply? For the scan, uh, so this is a, an MLME request. 
you have from the soft Mac layer to stop uh, all the transmissions. You want all the transmissions to be over before you actually send your um, your MLMA request your, or your 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 MLMA frames. So um, you turn your f you change your filtering level as well because now you want to only receive beacons during a scan. We no longer process any data frame nor any command, Mac command, we only process the beacons. So there is something to tune uh, at the filtering level. Uh, you need to provide, of course, the list of channels that you want to scan, because a scan uh, usually goes from one channel to the other, and you have to wait a given amount of time on each of them. So the, the amount of time is the beacon order that you can provide, uh, that you should, have, uh, should be able to provide. And upon reception of a beacon, of course, you need to pass the frame, uh, extract the, 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 the address of the coordinator, its PAN ID, and re retrieve as well uh, the LQI indicator. Associations uh, work this way. Any device in the system, including coordinators, may try to associate with coordinators or the PAN coordinator as well. So the peer will send an association request. The coordinator that receives the request should immediately acknowledge the request. This is time critical. Then it has some time to decide whether or not it wants the device to be associated. Uh, this, the, an association response is then sent back to the peer. The association response contains a status, so either the, the device was accepted or the, the PAN was at capacity, you will reach the maximum number of devices, or you just simply don't want this device to, to join. So there are two error codes that can be provided. If the peer requested a short address on this PAN, which is not mandatory, the spec says that if the device is too limited, it can just refuse the, the short address. And in that case, you would return Xerox FFFE, which is a standard, which is a placeholder of saying uh, the, this uh, this device doesn't have any short address. Otherwise, the the coordinator should allocate one on the pan and send it to the to the peer in the association response. These associations uh, can be done from both sides, so uh, the coordinator may tell a child that uh, it's been kicked out of the network at any moment, and the child itself may also leave if it's, if it's its uh, desire. And in, in both cases, of course, you the address filters should be updated on the peer side, uh, because you no longer want to get the frames from the, the pan, if any. The conflicts that may arise are called pan ID conflicts. So there are two situations that may lead to a PAN ID conflict. One of them is your PAN coordinator, you receive a beacon. In this beacon, uh, there is a bit saying that the beacon has been emitted by the PAN coordinator. And this bit is set, meaning there is another device on the same PAN ID, on the same network, that says I am the PAN coordinator, which might happen if maybe the devices move and get in range at some point, well, that's, that's possible. So this is a situation where uh, that is not acceptable for the, the PAN controller that received the beacon, and uh, an action should be taken. Another situation where this could arise is maybe having a node in between two other coordinators. There are it's the, the PAN IDs are 16-bit values, so you have more than 65,000 possibilities, but it's possible that uh, two controllers have decided to create PANs with uh, the same PAN ID. They don't get the beacons, uh, the, the they are not in range, but the device in the middle might receive the beacons from both of them. So it is associated with one PAN coordinator, and it receives a, no a beacon from the other PAN coordinator saying, oh, I am also the, the PAN coordinator, which cannot work. So in that case, the device should send an, a conflict notification to its own PAN coordinator, which then should take an action. In that case, the concerned PAN coordinator might need to sense the network, to sense all the channels, 
find a new, ch a new channel that is not used and a pan ID that is also unused on this channel and send to all its children a uh, coordinator realignment command. The devices upon reception of this command should follow the coordinator, uh, change their uh, channel and pan ID and uh, continue working on another channel and another uh, pan ID of course. What may happen as well, a uh, device may lose the synchronization with the coordinator, so maybe it doesn't receive any more acknowledgement from the, its coordinator, or uh, maybe he didn't receive the coordinator realignment command because he he it was asleep, I don't know, or not in range at that moment. So if it was associated, it may try to do something that looks like a scan, but instead of sending um, beacon requests, it will go through all the channels and send orphan notifications until the coordinator receives the notification and uh, immediately answers with a coordinator, coordinator realignment command saying, yes, I recognize you, you can still be part of the network. Otherwise, the device should have to just forget about the pan and start a new association with uh, after another scan. So let's uh, now switch to the Linux ke kernel stack. Here is my beautiful figure trying to picture how it's built in the Linux kernel. Hopefully you can, you can see. Uh, so um, let's uh, start from the bottom. Uh, at the bottom you have the hardware, uh, hardware transceiver with a PHY. The PHY, uh, so you can have several PHYs on a device, but it's not really common, so I use the simple situation where you only have one. The file is described in software by a WPAN file structure. Uh, this structure is, uh, there is a 1-1 one -one mapping with the, the actual hardware, okay? But then from the Mac layer, you can create several sub-interfaces on a single file. So each sub-interface will actually be given a role. The three roles that are now available well, in the past, we only had node and monitor, and with my uh, recent contributions, we should now soon be able to create coordinator uh, sub-interfaces as well. So a node is just a device in the network that acts like a list node, basically. The monitor is the sniffing device. So uh, during the, the demo, I will try to set up a monitor interface on one of my three uh, AT USB and I will open Wireshark to show you what happens on the network while the other are talking. But this one will remain silent on the network, of course. And the last possibility is being a coordinator, which is something new. And the coordinator uh, can also send the beacons, which is, uh, uh, which is something new. And uh, possibly in the future have may maybe more features as well. A sub-interface contains a WPAN device structure. This WPAN device structure actually belongs to the I3C 802.15.4 layer, where we have a CFG layer that kind of makes the link between the Netlink layer and the uh, Mac implementation. So right now in the Linux kernel, we only have a soft Mac implementation, which is the left uh, most side. Uh, we might have at some point a hard Mac driver uh, which would interfere inter interface with the CFG layer in that case. Right now we have an hard Mac, a single hard Mac device in the Linux kernel that is supported, but it's been wired through the soft Mac layer. So it's, it's a bit uh, specific. I explained at the beginning that some of the features were um, uh, that the, the file had some uh, some duties on the Mac as well. In practice, some of the Mac duties are offloaded to the to the hardware and are not performed by software. Uh, typically, the frame validation and the acknowledgements are well. The for the frame validation, you really do, as I said, you don't want to be interrupted too frequently. So it's best if you just want to receive fr uh, frames from your own, um, well, that are targeted to you, 
to set the filters properly so that uh, you're only interrupted when it's needed. And for the acknowledgments, uh, this would be hard to support in software because we have uh, because this operation is time critical, as I said. So uh, we need the acknowledge well, we need the frame that must be acknowledged to go through the address filters because we only want to answer frames that are targeted to us. Then this frame should have the acknowledgement request bit enabled in the frame, in the Mac frame, and also the, 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 the hardware should be configured to answer those, those frames. If everything is right, then the acknowledgement frame is automatically sent back. So the current implementation in the Linux kernel, well, the one before uh, my huge pile of, of patches, uh, didn't allow the, the, the dynamic discoveries. We couldn't create coordinators. Uh, there was no beaconing, uh, beaconing feature possible at that time. So you would have to create your network beforehand to set up an ID, a static pan ID, and uh, hopefully it would work on the field. But of course, this is a bit limiting, so we prefer to be able to create a network directly in the field and have those dynamic um, um, interactions between the different devices. So that's what those commands are made for. So the first interface that has been brought was, of course, the scanning interface. Um, there is a netlink command for that. The netlink command takes a uh, the type of scan that should be performed, if it's a, a passive scan, uh, an active scan, energy detection scan are not yet supported, then the range of channels, possibly as well the page, and the uh, beacon order, that uh, uh, so that's the time you want to wait on each channel. This request will be processed by the netlink layer and forwarded to the Mac layer, which will actually perform the, 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 the scan by stopping the traffic, wait for the key transmission queue to be flushed, and, uh, well, basically create a background job that will do the channel changes and wait on each of the channels. Um, this background thread should also even possibly send um, beacon requests if you are performing an active scan and in all cases wait for the incoming beacons. Uh, until we receive those beacons, we check, of course, their validity, and we forward them directly to the, to the upper layers so that the user now has full access to all the data that's been received. Uh, the user can stop those, uh, the scan feature at any moment, and uh, a, a when the, the scan stops or is, is uh, aborted or stops naturally, uh, the information is also sent to user space uh, to notify user space that the scan is over and the interface is set back to in its original state. The beaconing interface works more or less the same. Uh, you need to provide a duration. The maximum duration that you can provide is 15. So below 15, you're actually providing a real beacon order which will change the, the, the beacon interval. If you provide 15, it's, it actually means please only answer the beacon request. So by default, a coordinator in the Linux kernel will not send any beacons. If it's a coordinator interface, you can allow the beacons to be sent by using this command. And either you provide a number below 15 and this will send beacons at a given rate, or you give 15 and only the beacon requests will produce the emission of a beacon. This is also handled in the uh, background job and you may change the, the, the beacon order at uh, runtime. Here you have the new commands in the IAWPAN tool. So there is a WPAN tool um, repository for the user space tool. It's based, well, the idea is based on the IW uh, tool for wireless devices. So this one is uh, just for w the WPAN subsystem. Uh, you can now start a scan, of course. 
uh, the scan, the first command will um, start the scan and show you the results while they arrive and then return the, 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 the command will end when the scan is over. Otherwise, scan trigger will just trigger the scan return immediately. If you want to follow, you can look at the Netlink uh, socket with IWPAN monitor, for instance, which will show you what happens on the socket if new beacons are being received or not. You can abort the scan. And of course, uh, on the other side, so the other coordinator that advertises its own PAN, you can start sending beacon or stop sending beacon, basically. After scanning, you know what are the coordinators around. So you can decide to send, uh, you can decide to associate with a device. So you, the user might decide, uh, might choose the, the, the coordinator with the highest LQI, the, so the link quality indicator. And um, the, the, well, a netlink command is also involved. Uh, on the Mac side, a, uh, an association request will be sent. We expect an acknowledgement. That was a, a problem to while, while developing this, uh, this feature. Uh, because we missed this information in the past. And we then wait for the association response, pass this response, and update our, um, uh, our address filters accordingly. Uh, there was a trick there because the address filters had to be updated at least with the PAN ID before sending the association request, because the association response will be targeted to this uh, PAN ID. So the PAN ID field the pan ID value would be within the destination field of the association response. Uh, the processing of the association request is uh, very simple. Either you, so uh, we added a new parameter, which is basically the number of devices that you allow to connect that can be tuned with a netlink command as well. Otherwise, for now, I've decided to make it simple and always allow the associations. Uh, this will not be enough and we would need at some point to forward the request to user space because this is not so time critical and let the user space decide whether or not it wants to allow to associate with, the devi with this device. On the disassociation notification side, uh, it's very simple, just a notification. So um, the netlink command gives the PAN ID and the coordinator address that you want to reach to send this, uh, this, uh, this association. Not only the, uh, there is no PAN ID involved here, just the, 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 the address. So here are the new commands as well. The associate, associate command, disassociate command. The list association command will show you your both the parent and the child devices. And uh, the set max associations uh, will also give you, uh, well, uh, allows to set a maximum number of devices that you may want to uh, associate in the network. So uh, here are the patches if you want to check out this work and may want to try home. I strongly advise you to check out the GitHub uh, repository instead of the patches on the mailing list because I have like 60 or 70 patches ongoing. Uh, only the first 10 patches or so are sent at new uh, in, in each new iteration. Uh, I've also uh, played with a Zephyr device that you have here. Uh, so this is an Arduino Nano BLE uh, that runs the Zephyr stack uh, just to see if they were operating together. Uh, I had a few issues with that, so uh, there are some patches that are being discussed on the on Zephyr um, GitHub. Uh, but otherwise, it's uh, more or less work now. So we can uh, we can scan the, the the devices running the Linux stack on one side and associate with them, and also send a disassociation command from both sides. I have five minutes, so I'm gonna do a short demo. Uh, let's first. I hope you can read. Yeah. Um, so let's first set up the the monitor interface. So that's uh, just setting a channel. We can show. Just setting a channel, 
creating a monitor interface and setting it up. On the other side, I'm going to start Wireshark just to show you the various, freq uh, the various frames. All right. So ah, it's going to be hard to follow with. Uh, here we are. Uh, we first set the same channel on the two remaining AT USB devices, so the devices that are here, they are all running the same uh, Linux stack. We create a coordinator interface on one of them, the other one will be a leaf node. This coordinator gets a pan ID and a short address. I will then perform a scan, so this is a passive scan. I'm only scanning two channels just uh, to make it uh, uh, quicker. Uh, while the so the leaf node will perform a scan, while the coordinator itself will send uh, beacons. Once this has been done, I will stop sending beacons passively. Uh, this is there. I will change the beacon order to 15, meaning please only answer beacon requ beacon requests to not pollute the Wireshark output. Uh, the on the then you have when after scanning you have the, exten the extended address so you can perform an association. We will list the associations and then perform a disassociation and again list those. So first those are the, the interfaces. It performs a scan, you have um, the kernel log on the right. Uh, it finds a pan coordinator, a uh, coordinator, sorry, which advertises pan number two. We can associate with it. So now we have, when we list the associations on both sides, one has a child, the other has a parent. And then we can finally disassociate and uh, we have no longer, no more associations between the two. Uh, I could as well use the Zephyr device. So I've just enabled the interface here. I can perform an active scan, which uh, finds the, the device running the Linux stack. And now I can associate with this device as well. And on one side, I have uh, the, the Zephyr device saying, OK, I'm associated on the other side. Uh, I can uh, see the association was successful as well. And I can finally show the Wireshark output where we have first the three beacons that were sent. Then, and I say, I'm sorry, it's a little, it's, it's small. short, small. <laughs> you, you have to trust me now. So uh, <laughs> there is an association request here, an acknowledgement, the response, an acknowledgement, then the disassociation notification. Well, everything that I've sent uh, is uh, visible on Wireshark. We could also, on the association response, for instance, if it was big enough, I would show you that we can see the short address that was allocated to the, to the device. And that's all for me. Uh, do you have any questions? You, you, you can use, well, it creates, uh, the, the, the interface that gets created is visible under IPL or IPA, and you can use it to send data as well. But as, as an address, it's uh, yeah. Yes. 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 I fear there are no ways for now. That's indeed something that uh, we've discussed a little bit internally that would be very nice to have both being connected together, but I think there is no interface yet. Well, there was a discussion about that like some of like USB API that you might build on, for example, mm. right? And then, then using like this 
Nu är två procenten för att jag bara tycker att det finns väldigt många procenter på olika länder som kan det. So there has been some research in this area and now there's been talks in Beijing as well in some sense, right? Um, but from from this part from the independent uh, we are not looking at that. So I would be like not looking for a system and either you go the broad system of four or you go the six eight one that are working quite often here. And then how you handle the uh, the uh, potential labor issues too to get back into the IR system type of thing or not, that's really up to to you as a So there's no need for me to talk about this question. Yeah. But if you want to talk about the labor issues in the future of the industry, I don't know if you can say that. <laughs> Short answer, no. <laughs> well, we are running out of time, so thank you very much, everyone.